Welcome to the thrilling conclusion of Operation Tool Temple. In the previous video, I completed the exterior build, and that was all the wall sheathing, and the framing, and the roofing, and the paint, and everything. And now in this video, we're doing the interior. So as you can see, it's a big mess in the old structure on the left, but here on the right, blank slate. So we're going to do drywall, wiring, paint, and then we start working on the cabinets and the workbench and the shelves and it's going to be awesome so stay tuned but up first gotta dig the trench to get the wires to the structure Okay guys, the building inspector is on his way here and I'm super nervous because he's gonna inspect the framing and the rough electrical at the same time. And I use some non-traditional framing methods, like behind me you can see that uh, this header doesn't have jack studs, instead it has header hardware, um, header brackets or whatever you wanna call it. And also just a single top plate. And those techniques, that's called advanced framing, which reduces the number, the amount of lumber that you need. And now that the price of lumber has gone back down, the bubble has burst, I feel kind of stupid for doing it that way because I wish I just did it the normal way and then there wouldn't be uh, this anxiety. We'll see what the building inspector says when he gets here any minute now. We'll see if I pass or not. Hello, welcome to my tool temple. And this little drinking buddy here is, uh, his name is Owen, and he was born four months ago. And he is the reason why I stopped taking videos because I was had too much other things on my mind to be making YouTube videos. Um, but I still completed this project, so I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you the fruits of my labor because I put a ton of work into this. And it turned out really, really good. <laughs> Didn't it, buddy? And I saved a ton of money doing it myself. So I'm going to show you 
all of my costs, the entire budget, and how much it cost me to build this whole thing from the ground up without hiring any contractors. And I even did the foundation myself. Okay, I'm going to go over all the expenses and I have them broken down into different categories. This first category I called site prep and it includes everything that went on around the structure. So a lot of gravel, had to have some trees removed, I got a really good price on that. Um, I had to grind the stumps down, I had to cut some concrete. So there was some machine rentals in that cost and it also includes the permit fee which is only 112 bucks for me in this case. Okay, this is the foundation category, and this was the most expensive um, part of this whole project. And most of that was uh, machine rentals and um, concrete, just ordering the concrete. And there was it was just a lot to do. There was a lot of material, a lot of work, very heavy lifting. I did hurt my back lifting these blocks, and I had to have my friend finish the job for me, and I paid him a little bit of money to help with that. But mostly the big costs were machine rentals and 750 bucks for concrete truck on a Saturday. And now we can begin the framing, except I did all the framing at the peak of the 2021 lumber squeeze. So two by fours were like $8 a piece. It was ridiculous. So I was using a technique called advanced framing where you just have one top plate, 24 inches on center, less studs under the headers. And the siding was expensive. And I was lucky just to find this, uh, this LP siding because it was really hard to get. It was in high demand but low supply. And these siding panels are also structural. So you don't have to have OSB sheathing on the walls and then have your siding over that, the siding panel is also the sheathing. So that helped a little bit. Okay, I saved a lot of money in this category because I went with the very cheapest garage door you can get. It was only like $500, I think. And... The reason I did that is because it was in stock and all of the other nicer ones with windows were on back order for several months and that was not going to work at all. I also got the front door for free from my neighbor, but I had to uh, restore it as you can see in these photos. And then because I had the really cheap garage door, I just spent 20 bucks on Amazon for these like little magnets you put up on the door to make it look like windows. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. Okay, so I went kind of crazy in this section of the build because, as you can see, I used some pretty colorful paint there above the garage door. And then the other side, I built a really elaborate vent that's kind of shaped like a starburst and did lots of trim and used lots of craftsman-style details. But in the end, I really didn't spend that much money. It was just a lot of labor. So that, that was the best part about that. Okay, this is another really big section because I have the electrical, which was just a lot going on, and then um, building the, the interior. So um, you can see I started off with red, and then I went back, changed colors to green. The electrical, I used aluminum 2-2-2-4 wire to get 100 amps from the house to the garage. And that's because copper was at an all-time high. So I was spending a ton of money on copper wire. And also I had two ground rods. And it was a lot of work. A lot of money. A lot of drywall. A lot of insulation. 
and then building the benches and also spent a pretty good amount of money on the wall track system for hanging all the tools but it was totally worth it another thing i sealed the concrete floor and i used a water-based sealer and that worked really well and these photos it looks kind of blotchy but it dried up perfectly and it looks great Okay, for me, this was my favorite part of this whole build because I loved doing the landscaping and I built a patio in between the garage and the house and it matches the landscaping next to the garage. And this patio, it might be where a hot tub will go one day. Um, and then on the garage side, I planted a little, a Bosnian pine. And I think I'm gonna add some more plants this spring as well. Right next to me is a 1967 Honda CA160. I am converting it to electric, so it's going to be an EV motorcycle. So subscribe to that channel if you want to get those videos. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching. See you next time.